That's all they know, but they don't know the half. When they read that paper, you never hear the truth in the newspaper. You never hear all of it. You never hear the full detail. Talk to someone who done been through it, done experienced it. It's worse than you think it is. Because sometimes I think now that I've been to hell, you know, but God spared me and brought me back. Putting the money before the life would never happen again. On September 3rd, 1991, the morning after Labor Day, workers at Imperial Food Products found themselves locked up in hell. Locked fire exits trapped workers inside a burning, smoke-filled chicken processing plant. Twenty-five workers died that day in Hamlet, North Carolina. Here are the voices of some of the workers who survived. I was born right here on this spot. This is where my family home, I was born right in the house, but the house had burnt. When I was growing up, we didn't know what downtown was. We went downtown like Hollywood, you know. I like working with people. And uh, I was going to school for nursing. And it was, it was nice. I enjoyed it. I never had nothing in my life. I've all I worked since I was 17 years old. I've been on my own, and I've never been where I had to go just beg somebody. Well, I don't have any food in my house, and I've actually been that way. These was good people, very good people, hardworking people. Everybody they they had to go to that plant. They knew that them people needed to work, and the majority of those people job service sent them there because they sent me there. They knew that I was the type of person that was honest, trustfully, and was willing to work. And you know, when they first hired me, the very first thing he told me that they didn't have a union, they didn't talk union in I went to the unemployment office. The first job I got was at Imperial. I really didn't have, uh, you know, skills. And I couldn't stand the smell, for one thing, that fresh chicken. And so that made me sick on the stomach. And the smell, that horrible smell was just terrible and I didn't think I was gonna make it you know I really didn't I wanted to give up on it but my mother told me not to she said Ada you can do it you know she said you can handle it and I, I had to handle it for my children if I wanted to feed them you know we were sort of like a family you know we all uh, we shared what we had with, with each other um, we did what we had to do it was, I don't know, the um, supervisors, I guess they, they, they had a job to do, but, you know, it wasn't nice because they, they, they didn't talk to us like we was humans. And I guess it was because of the, the manager because he didn't talk to anybody like they was humans. But we manage. For bread, I don't think I would have anything to say to him because he was one of the nastiest person that I could ever meet up with. I feel like you're supposed to look at your employee just like, I mean, your family, that's the way I look at it. You're going to come in there and cuss your employees out just like they nothing. Just like you was a dog or something, if I have to say such a word. When you got three or four children, and that's all the income you have. You can put aside what he said and do the work. People that was working there 17, 18 years weren't making no more than five fifty an hour. That's all they were paying, no matter what. They was more concerned about profit because you, if a piece of chicken fell on the floor, they'd tell you, pick that damn chicken up. And you see magnets and then rotten chicken and stuff, and that's the worst part. Now you want to get sick, that was it. So I tell you, when you eat chicken, you don't know what you're eating. <laughs> <laughs> they never had a drill, as far as I know. I didn't, didn't have one while I was working there. There was no sprinkler systems in the plant. There was a lot of things you knew that wasn't right, but if you, got, if you complained about it, you got fired. We always said that we was going like, to catch hold of each other if there was ever a fire because they never did fire drills or anything like that. When 
workers tried to report these dangers and safety violations to the proper authorities, their voices were ignored. Yes, I had complained to my supervisor once, but he said if you need to work, you need to stay here on the job. I even picked up the phone and made a complaint at two job service once about that plant. Uh, it was like a hush, closed place. I guess a lot of big pie for men with a lot of money was be really operating the plant. You go in in the morning, there was times that I went in in the morning and the mechanics was working on this broiler. They were forever having trouble with it. Um, sometimes we'd be working and uh, the fire would go out. Um, sometimes the thing would blaze up and um, you could smell gas, but we still had to work. Because we was working like slaves for a little bit of money, little or nothing. We had to be locked up for a little bit or nothing because we had to provide for our families. Well, after I come home at night uh, from school, because uh, it was from 7 to 9, and I come home and I'll study until about 12, then I get in bed. But I never uh, had the time to go look for other jobs because I had to work every day. The Saturday before Labor Day, mechanical problems developed in the deep fat fryer. It started on the Saturday before Labor Day. It was so smoky in there. And the supervisors wouldn't let them go out. You couldn't breathe. You, and they didn't give you anything to try to block it or anything. Only the supervisor walk around with the little thing over the nose and mouth. Other than that, the employees had to suffer the consequences. I used to complain about that. And they tell me I talk too damn much. The Imperial plant had already experienced three fire flare-ups that year. But despite the obvious danger, the fire exit stayed locked and the workers stayed on the job. We worked that Saturday, and uh, it did start that Saturday. And then when we left, they had the mechanics in there working on it. When we came back in that Tuesday morning, we was off that Monday. When we came back in that Tuesday morning, uh, they was working on it then. And when you walked in the front door, you could smell the gas then. It was so loud until it burned your eyes. You walk, you know, you smell the, the, the smoke, you smell the gas fume. If they don't get a new brawl in here, they're going to kill somebody. And they did. Twenty-five of them. In the other news today, in the small town of Hamlet, North Carolina, 25 people died when an explosion and a fire gutted a food processing plant. Many of the workers inside were trapped and 40 other people were injured. Somebody ran to the door and they say, y'all run, the plant is on fire. And of course, everybody looked that way, you know. And then uh, somebody else come through the door, y'all run, y'all run, y'all run, the plant's on fire. And everybody just, just went haywire, you know. Um, and in the area that where I went, we ran into the freezer and uh, somebody say, turn around, say, go back the other way, say, the fire's coming this way. And when we started back out, we was trapped that way. We had to turn around and go back. Then we got trapped in there. I can't say how many, but I know we was like this. Um, and everybody was, it, it's praying, hollering, men, women. You know, Lord, let me out. Somebody help me get out. I got my children home. And somebody told me to look and see what was going on. And when I looked, 
All I could see were big old balls, look like beach balls of fire and smoke like somebody was throwing it at us. We turned right around, went back to the dumpster site. That's where we got stuck in. Nobody could get out. And that particular day, he put us in the back of the plane and we usually were to the front, me and my whole family. And I always say to myself, if only we was in the front, then we all might have survived. Me and my family. Workers kicked open locked doors and tore at walls in a desperate attempt to escape and rescue themselves. I remember uh, this little boy. Uh, they reached up and they pulled the tin off of one side and they pulled it open enough and we put we pushed and he managed to get he he got out. And far as I know, I think he was the only one that gotten out of it. And I know when we when they did somebody did open the door. I remember all of us was going out in the parking lot. Finally, they brought Peggy out. When they brought Peggy out, me and Deb bent down to check Peggy. Peggy was dead when they brought her out. I don't remember what position that I was in. I don't know where I was standing, um, whether I was laying or what. Um, but I remember uh, I was praying and I was asking God to uh, save us. Don't let us die like this. I said, Lord, I say we are not what we supposed to be, but please don't let us die like this. And something, something, somebody said, um, if you hear me, follow my voice. Just follow my voice. Just come to where you hear my voice. Come to where you hear my voice. And I went to reach into where I heard the sound. And somebody caught hold of my hand. And they pulled me out. 19 of the 25 workers who died were single mothers. A total of 56 children had a parent killed or severely injured in the fire. It was um, mothers that died that had little children. Uh, I, I, I feel for those children. You know, uh, I think about my mother, and everybody needs their mother. I lost a cousin, Elaine Rattler, Rose Wilkins, Bertha Gerald. I mean, basically all of them. Gail had a, um, a little boy, Tony, but Tony had just started to... Um, Kindergarten, and Gail didn't live to see him get in the first grade. Elaine had two small ones. Mary Alice had a small one. Margaret Banks, she had two small ones. Um, Elizabeth Bellamy had a small child. Yeah, she had just had a new grandbaby, Minnie Mae Thompson, you know. Fifty-six workers were injured in the fire. Their medical problems include severe burns, blindness, respiratory disease, neurological and brain damage, and post-traumatic stress. I went back to school um, since the accident, but I couldn't function. I, I couldn't remember. I can't. I couldn't spell. I can't. I can't function. I have a lot of help, and my Sunday school teachers, they help me a lot. And I am now at the point where I can read um, a statement, uh, I can read a whole paragraph, when there was a time when I couldn't read my whole name. I was supposed to graduate um, October the 15th, and the accident happened. September 3rd. Good evening. There will be no trial in the Imperial Food Products plant fire case. Today, plant owner Emmett Rowe pled guilty to 25 counts of manslaughter in the deadly fire last year. But Rowe's son and another man, both who managed the plant, 
will go free as part of the plea bargain. Roe will be eligible for parole in about three years. Some of the injured workers are now activists. They believe that they survived to tell this story, a sad story that continues to this day. There are still dangers on the job. There are still things that are happening on the jobs. In the Rockingham area, in the Hamlet area, these people are still going through the same thing. There are not no workplace committees in these factories. These people don't want you to go to the bathroom. And I have people actually calling me, telling me this, but then our OSHA is not looking into none of these things. And that like make me wonder what's going on. Is our state officials taking care of us or are they putting us in the dump? The government and politicians and insurance company, all of them work together. I feel like they're working together. And they're making it very hard and difficult for us. Less than two years after the Hamlet fire, insurance companies and the business lobby in North Carolina teamed up to introduce legislation which would slash compensation benefits for injured workers. They're killing us slowly every day. Just like right now, I just feel like there are other people out there and lots of them is going through the same thing and worse. That's why I came today because with us, we were locked in. We couldn't get out. And I always say, I don't know who unlocked these doors, but I thank God for that particular person because without that, all of us probably would have died. But I feel like God left me here for a reason. And my life has changed tremendously. I mean, I'm not a perfect child of God, but God knows my heart. And I don't want to stand now and see this happen to anybody else. Because if it happened to them the way it happened to us, God only forbid. Because I look at the people in Waco, I look at the news last night where they had these plants that was on fire. And you know, my heart cries out to these people because when you can't do nothing for yourself and you're bound, if there's ever been a hell, that was it. They could get involved, they could form a union, they could go around and protest and cry and help these other people in these other places and other plants that are being mistreated. All in it together, Republicans, Democrats, and whoever, independents, we all in it together. And we're going to suffer together. Because we came here with nothing and we're going to leave with nothing. I ain't seen not one man go in no grave with a suitcase and a Rolls Royce and a, 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 a beach house and stuff. And they do, I want to see it. Don't give up. Fight for your rights. Fight for them. Even if it costs losing your job. Do what you have to do. Pray about it. God is with you for 100 percent. Ain't gonna rest until I get my freedom. Ain't gonna rest until I get my freedom. Ain't gonna rest until I get my freedom. Long as I got breath in my body. different from the workers of today Set out on an important mission We gotta have better working conditions Ain't gonna rest until I get my freedom Ain't gonna rest until I get my freedom Ain't gonna rest until I get my freedom Long as I got breath in my body We're gonna fight, fight, fight We're gonna fight Malcolm and Martin, they fall to the very end.
got one more do we have to give runaway shops unemployment how will we live control of the wealth good jobs programs for oppressed people we're organizing with such a force you think we're legal ain't gonna rest until i get